Good morning. Let us pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here and we will hear with open hearts and hear what you want to say today. Thank you. Let us read the old Psalm 23. A oh, good old psalm. <laughs> psalm 23, verse 1. I will read the whole psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right path, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. He will provide me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Shepherds do everything for their sheep. Provide them feeding, sharing, caring them, caring for them when they are sick building a shelter of or barn, protecting them from danger, and fighting, if necessary, when a hostile animal or poacher comes. Verse 1, he says, I will lack nothing. I have all that I need. I will lack nothing because he, I have a perfect shepherd who, as just explained, provides me in the best possible way. What does a shepherd need to supply his sheep optimally? What does a sheep or a child need to free a prosper optimally? All that I have just listed, but it is even scientifically proven that this is not enough. The most important condition is love. The love of the shepherd, the love of the father, which makes us trust. In 1 Corinthians 13, we can read about the love of the Father. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record, no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about in injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins, wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Amen. Quite challenging, isn't it? Why don't we trust? Why don't we let go? I think because, for example, we have entrusted our lives to someone or were entrusted to someone who did not mean well with us. There we have had bad experiences. Entrusted ourselves to fear or to control and learned to protect ourselves, to go our own ways. Believed scientific, scientific studies that said so, for example, that fear is good because it protects us? Honestly, the only one who really knows what we need and who we are doing is God, our Heavenly Father, who made us and has a good plan for us with us. He has given us His Son, His only Son, so that we may be able to help us. He may be able to help us, not we. <laughs> Where we have taken a wrong turn, we have removed from the flock, 
sought the greener pastures on the chasm to save us, to bring us back on his arms to the fold, to the healthful and protective fellowship. He leads me rest in green pastures and leads me to still waters. Rest from what? From stressful situations? From hard experiences? Diseases? Fights? But we don't need to look back either. We won't be, we won't be frozen to a pillar of salt like Lot's wife when they fled Sodom and Gomorrah and God said, don't look back. We live in the New Testament. We are free through Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, if we look back, we will not be able to stand at the plow and make a straight for us. Make straight for us. We will not be able to go a straight way. Which in my opinion means that by looking back at old hurts, situations and always, bring, and always bringing that out, we are not able to fully forgive and repent and embrace freedom in Jesus. I have experienced that by doing this, looking back again and again, you allow bitter and painful so thoughts and feelings to come up again, leading you back into fears, anger and sadness. Yet you had actually already conquered with Jesus through his forgiveness. Sometimes it is important to look again at some experiences and injuries of the past, but always with the goal to let them go and that through repentance and forgiveness. When we have experienced this liberation through Jesus, when he has healed our wounds, we may rest in his pastures and receive new strength ideas, joy and peace and heal all, uh, heal all the wounds, uh, complete all the wounds, heal complete all the wounds. Let us read Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, 17, verse 17 or 16. I will start in 16. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give us spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor and the God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler and authority or power or leader or anything else not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is the body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Amen. This is what God, our good shepherd, our loving father, has prepared for us and nothing less. less. Uh, let us look at Psalm 23, verse 3. He renews my strength and he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. <clears throat> Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. 
He is with you. This is his promise. Jesus has conquered every fear, every shame, every condemnation. condemnation. Although in the challenge he has prepared good things for you. If you can see it in yourself, find brothers and sisters who will pray with you, who will tell you their experiences with our God, good God. We need each other. And verse uh, Psalm, Psalm 23, verse 6, he said, Only goodness and mercy will follow me all my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why should a shepherd or a father have anything good, anything but good for you? Punishment is never God's plan. Always encouragement, love and increase. Yes, I also experience it very often. It doesn't always look like it from the outside, but he always keeps his promises and, he, and we will abide in the house of the Lord forever. Let us meditate, let us inhale, let us believe the word of God. And let us read Hebrews 1, verse 1. This is the radiance of his glory and the expression of his being, and bears all things by the word of his power, having accomplished the cleansing of our sins by himself. He has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Believe that all God's ways are good for us, even if it more almost tears us apart during them. In Hebrew 11.1, 1, we can read again and again, but faith, faith is a firm confidence in what you hope for, a conviction of facts you do not see. Hold on. He is faithful. You are good shepherd. He knows your way and he will not drop you suddenly. His love is a way, his way too big for that. <laughs> and let us read Psalm 24, at least. Verse 7 to 10. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the King of Glory enter. Who is the King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, invincible in battle? Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the King of glory. Open up your hearts for the King of glory, and he will come, and he will protect you, and he will guide you, and he will love you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank also uh, that also through images, testimonies, promises and facts makes us grow in faith, true trust and understanding. That we are allowed to be so close with you. That we are allowed to talk so honestly with you. And by the fact that your Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death and all dark powers, we have free access to you and to all heavenly authority. Thank you for this huge gift and thank you that we can learn to accept and use it. And we are your children and can always rest in you. Amen. God bless you.